Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be finding the square roots of a complex number. Wait a minute, why did I say square roots, not the square root? Because complex numbers have two square roots. Hopefully you already knew about it or you've seen the lecture videos. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't and if you're new to complex numbers. So we have a number 3 plus 4i written in standard form and we're going to find the square roots. That's why I did not use the real square root sign where we can kind of write it like this because this would be more appropriate for real numbers. But sometimes abuse of notation, we just use it. Okay, sorry about that. I'm also guilty for that. But anyway, so I'll be presenting at least two methods. I'm thinking about the third one right now. I'm not sure, but it's really cool. At least I'll show you the outline. Okay. So, the first method is going to be the following, setting up a system of equations. So, if the square root of 3 plus 4i is a complex number, which can be written as x plus yi, and remember, if you find one of the square roots, the other one is going to be the opposite, because think about it. Square root of 9 is 3, but if you think in the complex sense, it could be 3 and negative 3, because when both numbers are squared, we get 9. Make sense? So, Let's square both sides and we get x plus yi squared equals this. And if you wrote minus x minus yi, you would get the exact same thing. Make sense? So we can just negate it. Now, let's go ahead and expand this. That's going to be x squared plus 2xyi. And be careful here. Uh, if you square yi, you get y squared i squared, but i squared is what? Negative 1. Remember? You should always remember that. So this is minus y squared. And that's equal to 3 plus 4i. Just switch sides. Now let's go ahead and put the real parts together. x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi equals 3 plus 4i. All right, cool. Now here's the thing. The real part here is x squared minus y squared, and it's 3 here. So x squared minus y squared equals 3. The other equation comes from here. 2xy is the imaginary part, and the imaginary part here is 4. So 2xy is equal to 4. We can divide both sides by 2 and write this as xy equals 2 and x squared minus y squared equals 3. Now think about this system. Can you find two numbers whose product is 2 and whose difference of squares is 3? Well, that should be fairly easy, right? 2 and 1. It could also be... 1 and 2? No. X and Y are not interchangeable because we're looking at a difference here and the difference will be negative if you switch them around. So we got to stick to X and Y. But remember, this finds one of the solutions and then we'll just negate, the, uh, negate this to find the other one. So if X and Y are known, then the one of the square roots of this number is going to be x plus yi, which is 2 plus i. The other one is going to be negative 2 minus i, because it's just the opposite. Make sense? And when you graph them on the coordinate system or complex plane, you should see that they are separated by pi over, not pi over, just pi radians or 180 degrees. All right? Cool. So this is the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Well, second method does not always work. So that's why it's not a general method. That's why it's not the first method. Okay, first method is more general. I'll also show you a third one, which can also be generalized, but it's a little bit more painful. So now, to find the square root of this number, I'm thinking, can I write this as a perfect square, right? So here's what I notice when I saw this problem. Hey, 3 can be written as 4 minus 1 or negative 1 plus 4. Now, why negative 1? Because negative 1 is i squared. So I can do the following. i squared plus 4i plus 4. Now, what does this look like? If you said this looks like i plus 2 squared, you got it. Make sense? Okay, i squared is negative 1 again. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And 3 plus 4i gives us this. So, 
you try to find the square root of i plus 2 squared, I guess I could write it as 2 plus i squared, so it's probably better to stick with the standard notation. So let's go ahead and write it this way. So I'm going to replace the 3 with 4 minus 1. So I'll, ri I'll write this as 4 plus 4i minus 1, and this will become 2 squared plus 2 times 2i minus plus i squared, and now this will become 2 plus i squared. So this is my number, but I'm supposed to square root it. So if you square root, if you raise this number to the power 1 half, you're going to get 2 plus i. And of course, negative 2 minus i will also follow. Why? If you square negative 2 minus i, you'll get the same thing as 2 plus i squared. That's why, because you can always pull out a negative 1. Make sense? OK, cool. So there are two square roots of this number, and the numbers are 2 plus i and negative 2 minus i. So we manipulated the coefficients a little bit, but this was a good one, and we got the answer. This doesn't always work. What if you have something like 7 plus 10i? Can you find the square root? No, not like that. But can you find it by setting it equal to x plus yi? Yes, you can. That method always works. Okay, cool. Let's talk about the third method real quick, and then we'll finish up. So the third method uses trigonometry. And you're like, no, don't be afraid of trigonometry. Trigonometry is actually easy, especially at the basic level when you learn the definition of sine, cosine, tangent, and then kind of learn some identities. Don't worry. There's only like 100-something formulas. You're just going to memorize them all. <laughs> OK, not really. But so here's what we're going to do. We're going to think about the polar form of this number. Can 3 plus 4i be written in polar form? Of course. Let's call it z. And z equals 3 plus 4i. If you take out a 5, which is the modulus, by the way, because square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's the absolute value, right? Remember that? So you take out a 5, you're going to get 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5i. So we can kind of factor out a 5, but write the inside such that the modulus of the inside is 1. So we can kind of associate these with cosine of an angle and sine of an angle. Make sense? So here's the tricky part. This number will be square rooted. Is that a word? So I want this to be double angles because when I square root, I'll cut the angles in half. Remember the Mua or the Moiver formulas? Yes. So let's go ahead and instead of calling these cosine theta, let's call them cosine 2 theta because we have a choice and sine 2 theta. And then our goal is going to be to find the cosine and sine from here. So here's the idea. If you have cosine 2 theta and i sine 2 theta, and if you square root it, you just got to cut the angle in half, and that's going to be the answer. And of course, its opposite will be another root. But we don't need to talk about it because at the end, it just comes automatically. Make sense? So that's what I'm trying to do. So the question is, the million dollar question, can I find the cosine theta and sine theta? And the answer is a big yes. OK, here we go. This is the fun part because it's a little bit of triangle manipulation. This is 2 theta. And cosine 2 theta is 3 over 5. So this is 3 over 5. And this is 4 over 5. Now, here's what I'm going to do. This is the coolest part. Extend the base as long as the hypotenuse, which is 5, and connect. You get an isosceles triangle whose exterior angle measures 2, th two theta. So this must be theta, and this must be theta. Awesome, right? Now, you got a 4 and an 8. So this will be uh, 4 root 5, I think, right? Because if you had a 1 and 2, that would be root 5. If you have 4 and 8, that would be 4 root 5. Make sense? OK, here's the thing. You can find cosine theta from here. Cosine theta is, hmm, let's see, 8 over 4 root 5 which can be written as 2 root 5 over 5. And then sine theta is just going to be 4 over 4 root 5, which is 1 over root 5, or root 5 over 5. Make sense? OK. How do you use these? Well, this should be the answer, right? Cosine theta, 2 root 5 over 5, plus root 5 over 5i. Ah, isn't, isn't that what we said? Yes, but this was without the modulus. You do have a number here, which you have to square root as well. And its square root is root 5. 
easy peasy lemon cheesy. You just gotta distribute, and guess what? You're gonna get the exact same answer, two plus i. The other one automatically comes in, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.